Hi, so today we'll be looking at uh, a video by Richard Wolff. Richard Wolff is a Marxist professor and in this video he is trying to convince his audience that uh, the wages of American workers have not risen in the last few decades. So uh, we will try to understand his uh, reasoning, try to understand his arguments and uh, we'll analyze and critique them specifically if needed so let's begin and see uh, what information we can get from our beloved marxist professor i decided to take a look at hourly pay the average pay per hour that most Americans who are on a wage system get. Back in 1973 is when I started. That's a long time ago, friends, almost half a century. One of the interesting things that we always seek out whenever someone is trying to explain a period data is how he chooses his periods. So basically, Richard Wolff uh, is taking a period from 1973 to 2018. Uh, 2018 is his last year, and he will himself say that uh, shortly after this. But it is interesting to uh, imagine why he would start from 1973. Generally, people take 10 year periods in uh, the multiples of 10. And the reason for that is because that standard shows that the person has not himself arbitrarily chosen the period because choosing a period specific period can make one argument stand out and seem uh, far better than it would be when it is applied to other periods why did he choose 1973 would be cl become clear uh, as we go through his videos and then look at the data itself but let's move on but it's important to note here as a measure of checking whether someone is telling a lie or, or truth is to see uh, what basis he has for choosing one specific data over the other. The average wage in this country was $4.03 an hour. Okay, So I did a little calculation that we economists do. And I said, let's take a look at what you could get for $4.03 an hour in 1973 and adjust it to 2018, the last year that we have numbers for. And I adjusted how much money would you need per hour in 2018 to be able to buy the same bundle of goods that you could buy for $4.03 in 2018. 1973, and I came up with the answer. You'd need today an average, ready, of $23.68 an hour. That would be the average wage you'd need for a worker to be able to buy, on average, as much today as he or she could in 1973. $23.68. Well, what is the average wage in the United States in 2018. You needed 2368 to be at the same place you were 50 years ago. You know what the average is today? $22.65. That's right. Average wage in America today, in terms of what it can buy, is less than what it was 50 years ago. Uh, a point to be noted here, I couldn't find the data that uh, Richard Wolf is talking about. When I put a uh, search for it, uh, the answers came a little different than what Wolf is saying. If you go and check inflation for the United States or look at uh, the wages, it is not sure, and Richard Wolf does not give us his sources in the description box, the links to his sources, but what he is talking about, how he has segregated the workers. Which group of workers is he talking about? Does that include only the urban workers? Does that include people in the rural areas? Does that include people 
in the manufacturing sector, service sector. The only thing that we know is that he's ta talking about the people who are working in lower positions. So if you're feeling pinched, if you're feeling your economic situation is difficult, if you've had to adjust your family because living on one person's wage simply will not give you a decent lifestyle so that your wife or your elderly parents or your children have got to go to work now too, you're right. You are living what has happened. Uh, you can watch the rest of the video on his channel. But this is all what we needed. Firstly, uh, let's try to analyze his arguments let's start from the back he's talking about uh, the funny thing is that he's trying to appeal to the more traditional minded people which is strange considering that he's a marxist what is the reason that no person can now survive in the u.s a lower income level on a single earner uh, earner's wages and maybe it has to do with putting women in the workforce as an economist, it's surprising that Richard Wood does not understand the concept of supply and demand. If you have twice as workers in the workforce, obviously all of the poor people would have to work because the wages would be high. If, for example, we also include children in the workforce, then there would be a large increment in the number of the people working in the workforce. So every individual would be paid less. And thus, the family which consists uh, in, in which the child is not working will lose out to the families which have both the mother father and the children uh, all the mother father and the children working this problem that richard wolf is talking about has been created by the marxists themselves and now they are complaining as to why you cannot live on a single earner's wage how would you be able to compete with the people or the families in which both the uh, persons work? They earn around twice as much as you. And that will obviously give them a greater share of resources from the total pool of the resources available in the country. But leaving that, let's talk about inflation is also uh, very hilarious because it seems that he does not understand inflation. Hourly pay, we can expect it, do not increase or decrease because if there is an increase in efficiency brought about by technological advancements that would also lead to an increase in inflation, which means that for a person who is working uh, manually or doing or engaging in a manual labor, would have the worth of his labor remain constant or around almost constant besides the difference of about one dollar in a uh, gap in the hourly wages that is not huge maybe that is because of the data he specifically chose and we'll look at that in a short moment but what he does not understand is a simple fact about inflation as technological advancements increase, as growth increases, inflation also increases and the value of the money goes down. So your work, uh, if it's not, if it is the same level as the work of the person in 1973, would be worth as much when adjusted for infl inflation. This is how uh, the free markets work. They don't just give you all the money that you can think of from nowhere the amount of money that is in the society remains constant so if there are a uh, more number of goods in the society because of technological advancement the consumption of the people also adjusts itself to those goods such that the resources are so divided among the population that the value of person's labor remains the same if it is the if it is the labor of the same quality. But why does he talk about? And this is a very interesting point. A one dollar gap 
where did he find it let's look at the actual data let us look at the data of real wages if one looks at the data of the real wages one will find an interesting pattern he has taken the year 1973 when it is a peak in the amount of uh, early earnings that production and non-supervisory employees in the u.s get in real terms this is the reason why uh, it appears that he used specifically 1973 because 1973 was particularly good period for the real early earnings and remember these earnings are not for the people in the supervisory positions so they uh, to some extent represent the group that richard wolf is talking about we can not be sure that it does completely represent the group because wolf does not give us information as to which group he is talking about but this group contains people who are urban wage earners and clerical workers now if you look at the data obviously we can see that there is a pattern around a hypothetical mean line and because he is taking 2018 and he is comparing it to 1973 which is a peak he is finding a, a decrease in the real hourly earnings but overall if you look at the complete trend we see that it is more or less constant which verifies the theory that i am arguing for that the worth of the people labor, people's labor has remained constant and why it would won't be constant because the amount of the money that is earned is dependent on uh, the amount of the work that has been put in and because the amount of the work that has been put in if remove if all the other factors uh, that incorporate technol technology are removed if the amount of the work has remained constant then the value of their work in real terms would also remain constant and the earnings thus would also remain more or less constant they fluctuate a little bit up and down as the market tries to adjust itself but more or less they follow a long term constant pattern or appear to be following constant pattern at least in this time period if we had taken any other point for example 1980 the hypothesis would have been disproven if we would have taken an earlier period like 1965 the hypothesis would have been disproven he specifically chose 1973 which is a peak so as to give impression to his audience who obviously wouldn't check for itself that the conditions of the people working in the us uh are worse than they were a long 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 time back a specifically a very interesting and shrewd tactic first the left would try to advocate for policy that would destroy the economy for example putting women in the workforce which would halve the wages of the people and then they would complain about that and say that you deserve better and so you need a complete marxist revolution it is like the people who uh, if you give your car to them for repair they break your car and then they charge money to repair it and thus they can earn an unending amount of profits this is very strange and very marxist like behavior that we are seeing in work and how he is specifically choosing that piece of data to support his theory the theory is proven only for that specific period but if you apply it anywhere else for any other period it most probably wouldn't hold what is also interesting is that under trump they have been increase in the wages would he praise trump's politics uh, perhaps that is a question for another day but right now i think you can surely see why his arguments are based on half truths and how they are intended to mislead the audience for this reason one must look at the data and apply his critical thinking 
when trying to listen to other person talking about things that seem complex but an individual can also grasp and understand if he has a, a little bit of time to dedicate to pursuing the truth well our work uh, is almost done here so let's end this video and if i find a chance uh, i will talk about the concept of inflation and how it relates to value of money but that is also a topic for another day so let's end here